what is going on good morning good afternoon good evening everyone tuning in all around the world thank you so 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 much it is greatly appreciated i absolutely enjoy this my name is atx crypto here we discuss primarily focusing the richard hart ecosystem hex pulse chain and pulse x and of course our uh, today we're going to be trying to figure out if our man richard hart has been time in the launch of Pulse Chain. It's been, of course, a long time coming. We've been trying to figure out what's happening. We've got some some news happening all around the space. This is your one top one stop shop for all things crypto, blockchain, and of course, we're excited to bring you some insights. And of course, it's a fast paced world that we live in, especially in the world of cryptocurrency. Again, we primarily focus on the Richard Hart ecosystem, Hex, Pulse Chain, and Pulse X. Whether you're a seasoned crypto enthusiast or new to the game, we've got you covered with in-depth analysis on what's happening around the blockchain, who's doing what, what's going on. We're, we're bringing interviews with industry experts and much more. So if you enjoy this content, be sure to click that like button. Be sure to click that subscribe button. It is always greatly appreciated. We got Cash Up Cash in the house. Gabriel in the house saying hello. What's up, Mr. Gabriel? Hello, hello, hello. Cash Up Cash saying hey, hey. <laughs> what is popping? Hey, I'm happy to uh, just be just be here with y'all. You know what I mean? It's a it's another phenomenal day tonight. We got some amazing stuff starting for the weekend. It is the first Friday of the new year, 2023. So to everyone who's made it this far, made it into the week, enjoy the first Friday of 2023. And of course, as always, we just want to make sure that we have everything going on, happening all around the space. So let me get back to what we have over here. Give me one second. All right, but yeah, so... You know, the, the idea of the timing of Pulse Chain, I'm just going to have everyone kind of come on through. Justin Perez says, right on. Well, hello, Mr. Justin Perez. Thank you so much for coming in, tuning in, having fun, being a part of the chat. <laughs> Sorry, the dog's doing some crazy stuff in the back. I don't, <laughs> I'm not really sure exactly what, uh, what he's doing. He's fascinated by the light happening back here. It's okay. It's okay, bunny. Oh, the cat's in here with me as well. That's why. Interesting. All right. Well, say hello to all of my animals. They're all having fun. They're all just having a blast. Y'all may have seen my cat in previous streams. And of course, they're moving around everything here. All right. Well, Maybe I'll try not to focus on that so much and just let them do them. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone, again, is having a great day. It is uh, the first Friday of 2023, so hopefully y'all have a great start to the weekend. As a matter of fact, we are beginning the January 6th through 9th conference with Maddie All In starting tonight. Uh, y'all are going to actually be able to see me come on there as well as many other guest speakers. If y'all haven't seen that information, it is definitely something to start checking out. Um, and I, will, of course, will share this information across all of my personal areas that I can do. You can just go to hexconference.com or Hexpo online. And I will share this screen just so that way. Uh, what kind of dogs do you have, Gabriel? Ask. Well, I actually have four different type of dogs. Um, first one is a Doberman, second one is a German Shepherd, third one's a Lab, and fourth one's a Great Pyrenees. Now, they're all rescues, so we don't know, they're all mix of some sorts. Uh, we did do the DNA test, the Doberman is in fact 100% Doberman, and uh, the other dogs are just a mixed breed of a whole bunch of other stuff, but yeah, we've done the DNA test on the pups. To find out, you know, what their breakdown is and all that good stuff. And the German Shepherd actually has 2% wolf, which was crazy. Um, and, you know, you kind of expect it coming from German Shepherds as well, looking very similar to wolves. But that was just a fun little thing. But those are the type of dogs that I have. Uh, and along with, um, we're, we do board and trains constantly. 
And so this was a board and train we have over here as well with us today. And uh, give me and and then lastly we got three snakes. We got a cat, you know, and the cat's a little mixed breed of a kitty too. Not necessarily quite the calico. <laughs> Uh, yeah, those are the type of dogs that I have. Sorry, the um, the wife message, and I want to make sure that we always make sure that the wife is always good and responded to, right? Happy wife, happy life, and she knows that I typically stream around this time, so she understands if I don't get back, but for the most part, I always try to make sure that I can respond, especially if I have the ability to do so, and if I see the message. Um, so yeah, starting off, you know what I mean? We, uh, we, we are wondering what's going on with Pulse Chain. We have seen a lot of development come along. We've seen uh, some activity happening with the developers of Pulse Chain. Uh, yesterday's stream, we actually dove in a little bit deeper into kind of what's going on. Brett Tepp is uh, actually your Brett Paulson. Brett Tepp is his name on Twitter. He's one of the developers. They become more active. Uh, you also have three commas and uh, three commas capital, and along with a few other people. It's just really crazy to see this overall uh, growth happening within our community, and especially with the developers coming on as well. Richard Hart's been quite radio silent in regards to any news coming from Pulse Chain. So it begins you. It begins to make you wonder: Is he timing the launch of Pulse Chain? Right? <laughs> like, oh, Gabriel, you have a border collie? <laughs> Sometimes I think he's smarter than me. <laughs> Dude, border collies are freaking, like, genius level dogs. You know what I mean? You can, you can literally teach them a new trick with seconds, and you have to keep them constantly engaged. Uh, they absolutely love learning and having puzzles. And so we get little puzzle mats. I'm sure you probably may have something already like that. But you can get little puzzle mats for them to, you know, open up the solution, move stuff around. Um, you can lock it so they learn how to unlock. And that's what we do with the Doberman to kind of keep him active. So definitely things you can do in that regard. <laughs> yeah, man, that's why you need that pulse. You got a zoo to take care of over there. Yeah, I sure do. I definitely have a zoo. I would love Pulse Chain to launch, right? Uh, because I definitely sacrificed heavily, heavily, heavily for Pulse Chain and Pulse X. I am very fortunate that I was just able to be a part of that. And, you know, and really what it's taught is this is this lesson, right? Uh, we have this lesson that that we've learned with the bear market happening in 2022 with the delay of Pulse Chain and, of course, as a hex community we we know the term delay gratification so but it's still tough when it comes to the launch of pulse chain because we wanted to launch right and so i wasn't around in the beginning of hex and so i i didn't know of richard hart in 2017 like a lot of folks who were in on the first day they were following him when he was first mentioning bitcoin hex right that's what it was supposed to originally be called and and then he eventually came with the idea it was just going to be hex and what's what's incredible about it is that growth had was a two-year period now for a lot of us we had no idea right and again i wasn't around during that time for a lot of folks they didn't know if hex was ever going to be a thing it's not quite the same because it's not like they had sacrificed anything it was just a matter of waiting for him to launch it whereas this time there has been a sacrifice and so it teaches that delay gratification that much more. And really, we just want to know what's going to happen when it launches, right? We really just want to see, is it going to is it gonna come? And, and what's going to be the price? And, and what's going to happen? Like, all these unknowns that we have no clue of are all pondering in everyone's thoughts, right? Like, will it be successful? Will it take over? Will it do a possible 10,000x? Will it do... Uh, 100x will it do a 500x right if it does those like what can you what can you make happen with that as well like what kind of life-changing things can you do and can you commit to give me one second folks i'm gonna let the cat out she's she's distracting the dog for sure give me one second come on kitty uh-uh stay kitty go kitty oh 
fucking cat. Fucking cat. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so I'm back, right? And so yeah, like let's let's kind of dive in, right? Do do I think that Richard Hart is timing the, the delay of, of Pulse Chain, the launch of Pulse Chain? And to a certain level, like yeah, you kind of start to wonder, like, you know, he's talked in the past, and what we're gonna do today is kind of look at some of those videos. He's talked in the past about just having an MVP or a minimum viable product. And, you know, really what that said, it was like, you know, the bridge, the AMM bot, consensus with Pulse Chain, and making sure that the front end works for go.hex.com on Pulse Chain because that is the primary focus when he first started building Pulse Chain. It was for the Hex community. And then instead of rewarding the Bitcoiners like he did previously, he's now rewarding everyone on the Ethereum network because the Bitcoiners have grown a strong content for Richard Hart. And he gave them hacks for free in the launch phase. Uh, and they had the adoption amplifier. And there was this portion of time where if you had Bitcoin, you could claim some hacks and and so instead of doing that, he said, you know what? Screw the Bitcoiners. They don't get jack shit from him going forward. He doesn't want any part of what they're doing because, you know, he used to be a Bitcoin maximalist. And I think that's why he tried rewarding them when Hex first launched. And not only was he heavily criticized, but so many people who were once standing with him became such advocates or such a such a man not advocates the opposite such a such haters i don't even know i'll just say haters such haters against him what he's doing his lifestyle his choices and they began to spread this doubt within everyone within the community that now richard hart's the scammer and you know his real name's richard chuler and just because of that he's lying to you like it became this weird whole cycle thing that people just really started happening. And so he said, you know what? Forget the Bitcoiners. They ain't a part of my crew anymore. And with that said, he started coming out with Pulse Chain. Pulse Chain is now going to be a fork of the Ethereum network. Everything on the Pulse Chain network is going to be copied over onto this network. Uh, so every ERC-20, every ERC-721, all that stuff, the entire Ethereum fork, the entire Ethereum network is getting copied. It's a copy-paste scenario, but not only that, it's going to have faster throughput, lower fees, and of course, if you are in Pulse Chain, the ability to get in something early, right? And I think everyone knows there's a lot of ways you can get very financially wealthy in crypto, um, one, you have to either be a founder of a project. Two, you could have long-term vision. So if you stay in something that has good product market fit long-term, chances that you succeed are very likely. And then three, get in early on stuff, right? Those are the way people can have really life-changing wealth. And what we're going for, what at least what I'm going for, is generational wealth. Like I'm not looking for just the ability to live my life a certain style and and have millions of dollars just for myself to live on i want to be able to pass this down to my kids and then of course their kids right generational wealth is truly something that i look for uh, which is why i have multiple instances set up like trust for my kids and trust for my family and trust for the like many things are set up to build this generational wealth status and it has to begin at some point in time uh, for me, it began with Hex. For a lot of folks, it's going to be Pulse Chain and Pulse X. And then everything that can get developed there. So let's just kind of take a look over here real fast. Because, you know, in recent times, and by the way, thank you so much to all the subscribers lately. Um, I know Randy Alarski came on the stream yesterday, did a little tweet. And uh, so if y'all can, you know, shoot out the message, send a tweet, share the love, let them know that I am streaming. I appreciate everyone tuning in. It is highly and greatly appreciated. It means a lot that y'all are spending the time, especially considering the fact that we have other YouTubers in our ecosystem also streaming around this time. I don't know if it's because of the launch of the conference, if now other people are thinking that now's the best time to stream. Uh, because, you know, I, I, I click noon central standard time 
to try not to step on others' toes, right? I, one thing in the Hex community is we are pretty respectful for each other, at least the streamers, in my opinion. And so I, we, I look at the Pulse tube, I try to make sure everything's happening, but then I see people like Money Game Crypto streaming around noon now. I see Fugu Finance streams going a little bit longer, and I can't blame them. My streams go longer than an hour a lot of the times anyways. Uh, you know, Crypto Heartbeat comes through and he does a stream. Discord Syndicate's coming through. So to everyone who is here and just being a part of this stream right now with me, thank you so, so much. You are loved, appreciated, and it means the world. To everyone who has recently subscribed, you're incredible as well. The goal is to be at 500 subscribers by the end of the month. Help me get there by clicking that subscribe button down below. And without further ado, let's see what's happening with the overall ecosystem of Pulse Chain. So, um, go to this screen. Cool. So KDP has been pretty big on Twitter lately, sharing a lot of information. And what's funny is I'm really trying to figure out where she's getting some of this information from because when I do the research myself and look at the GitLab for Pulse Chain and PulseX, I'm not able to see these same instances. I can look at the developers and I can see what they got going on. Uh, that's something that we ended up doing yesterday. And you can see if I go over here for a second real fast just to show y'all. So if I come over here, I can share this tab. And guys, these are the developers for Pulse Chain, right? This is the GitLab for Pulse Chain. We have three commas capital. We have Brett Paulson. We have Kyle Barr. And of course, Richard Hart, Space Ghost, Quadrant. And so check out the days where they're active, right? So Kyle was just active January 3rd, 2023. We have uh, January 3rd, 2023. And again, it might be covering it up just slightly, but we have Brett Paulson right here saying January 5th, 2023. We got three commas capital, January 5th, 2023. So they are active, actively working at least on GitLab. And that is by far some bullish movement. In fact, I think because of that, we have seen quite a bit of activity happening with Pulse Chain not with Pulse Chain, with Hex. Check out this right here, folks. This is Hex right now, sitting at 2.4 cents. When I looked earlier today, it was at 2.5. It was up here already, right, before I started streaming. This is a 9 EMA and the 15 EMA, and really, typically when these cross, it is a bullish movement right there. So I'm waiting for that cross to really kind of flip my idea before I start getting too, too optimistic, because I've seen it go up before and then it comes back down. I really do want to see this number continue to reach and continue to grow. And seeing this, guys, look at this momentum we've had even over in just the last three days, right? If I just measure from the bottom here to where it's been, that's a 41% increase in three days. So if you were buying in this 0.17 or 1.7 cent range, you were getting pretty darn close to at least... Uh, getting back any money that you initially invested, and then it's just going to be positive returns from there. So keep up the good work to all the people buying. It is an absolute blast seeing this number move. Um, and of course, because we have a bunch of people buying, there have been a few people selling. And, and this is something we're just going to look at briefly. But these folks who are selling right now, it really always makes me kind of curious they, are they selling just because the price is going back up? And what's funny about this is every single time that we dive into a wallet and I start looking a little bit further into it, this is actually interesting. This is the opposite. Normally what happens is people are uh, sitting on USDC. And so what is this person doing, right? Let me see if, if they're staked, if they're not staked. Uh, they're messing with ASIC, of course. You know, that's another thing. People are losing their focus on Hex with other shiny objects. Um, I'm not playing that game myself, but they're moving money around. They are very active with everything that they're doing here. And I don't like being this active. <laughs> like, I think you should be able to do some trades every now and again and just be happy with what's going on. Uh, this person's moving a whole bunch of money around and, you know, anyways, they are sitting on 2 million hex, just kind of waiting right now. Are they staked? Let's take a quick peek. Might as well, since I dove in this far already, might as well see what they got going on real fast. And then we'll get into 
Pulse Chain and Pulse X and is Richard Hart timing and look into some of Richard's previous videos where he's mentioned what's necessary for Pulse Chain to launch. And if we think that it's already there at this point in time, yeah, so this person, if you pull it up, this is a person who just sold $19,000 and is basically sitting on 2 million hex. Well, they still have 15 shares with an average stake length of 19 or 9.2 years. They have 6 million, 6.6 .6 million hex staked. Um, and of course, you know, it looks like most of their stakes are already positive. So they've been in this game for at least a little bit of time. They are squid, so if they are capitalizing some money, it's understandable. They still have many stakes coming out. It looks like at least once a year, 2023, 2024, 25, 26, 27, 28, so on and so forth, all the way down up to 15 years. So uh, pretty incredible when you start seeing some of this stuff, right? And, and what I'm guessing is it's probably waiting to restake some portion of it, uh, maybe sell some portion of it. But yeah, if they're selling 19,000, but they have well over into the millions that they've earned and you can come over here and see you know they they have essentially nine hundred forty thousand is how much it initially cost for these stakes when they did it because they were staking at 23 cents eight cents you know two cents less than a penny they, they've been in early right they've been in since the early games and uh yeah them taking a little bit of profit not necessarily a bad thing the wife texts one more time coming home 1 p.m can delta go up he did all his potties already yep Oops, are in my office. Wow. All right, and today's going to be a short day. I got to take one of the dogs to the vet. So I do want to kind of get into what we're talking about right now and not necessarily focus so much on what is happening with this particular staker right here. Um, so if I dive into just this video right now, this was a interview he did with the highest of stakes director. Uh, the highest of stakes documentary that's going to be launching quarter one or quarter two of this year. Right now, they've already finished everything. It's just in the production process of being sold and then distributed. So we're hopefully going to see that come out in um, Netflix. And that way we can all watch it. Yep, Richard Hart gets much. You nailed it. The greatest weapon against the human soul is doubt. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he gets a lot of hate as well. Um, but at the same time, you know, like the dude has been true to his word on everything he says. And he said timing software is hard. It's not something he's ever good at because he doesn't do the work himself. And so if you're depending on the work of others, but you want it to be perfect, then it becomes that much more difficult for it to actually launch, right? And that's another portion of it as well. Uh, Happy New Year to you as well, RN. Thank you so much for being here, a part of the stream. Uh, Big GZ says ATX Hexacans. What's good? What is happening, my friend? I absolutely love that energy, love the vibe. Just overall love how it's been feeling. So um, this was actually a discussion that he was having with the director of the Highest of Stakes documentary. Whoops. And... It was really about the delay of launch between filming or launching the film or launching Pulse Chain and everything in that regard. So let me do this real fast, pause the music for a sec, and then show this part. And, and, so my story argument yeah. is that we need to make this current and real. Okay. Because if we if we do a retelling of Hex and no, everything but, that happened, and all the lives to, that were changed, but, you're, but if, yes, I know that Hex could still do another 10X or 100X, or mm -hmm. there's still a lot that it could do, yeah. but it's still older news versus this is happening now, yeah. right? Like this comes out and this is this has been live for three, four months and it's still right. very early days. It's exciting. I want to jump on, I want to read it, I can participate right now. That is exciting for somebody. And if but I was how to are you, this, how are, but so I'm going to use your argument against you. If what you're mm -hmm. saying is true and the actionability of a person's behavior after they've seen the film yep. is to get into something new, by definition, aren't you introducing a delay by which they cannot possibly get in ahead of time or on time because of the delay between filming the launch and then you getting post-production and distribution handled well, puts them three months or four months yep. after the launch and then they can hope for a dip, I but guess. I guess you're just going to have to have something else ready to launch. <laughs> so so let, let me talk about that part real fast for a second, okay? Now, what he's talking about here is initially the highest of stakes documentary had 
planned on catching a part of the launch, right? And so this this leads back to my thought of, is he timing the delay of the launch? Low volume, I know. I turned it up a little bit. I will turn it up on the next video as well. There's still a few more videos that I want to look at. What he was talking about in that video was if he launches Pulse Chain and if they catch, if they, if, 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 if the highest of stakes documentary team launches and catches all of the action with the launch of Pulse Chain and then they decide to post produce and do the film, people are already going to be late in that regard, right? He's talking about people being three to four months late. I'll go back and, and play that part again just a little bit. Right, and I'll turn up the volume here. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, and of course I didn't share. Um, did you hear that? The background. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, did y'all hear that part again? I forgot to share the screen. I'm not sure how that works whenever I have it on my screen. Um, but appreciate that, Crypto Gains Club. That background is dope. It sure is. I appreciate it. I enjoy it. So he basically says in this part... And, uh, fuck and distribution it, handling Because of the delay between filming the launch and then you getting post-production and distribution handled well, puts them three months or four months yeah. after the launch and then they can hope for a dip, I guess. I guess you're just going to have to have something else ready. So, okay. So let me know if y'all heard that one. I shared the screen this time. I'm getting better. I'm figuring all this out. I'm having fun with the stream. Y'all are coming in and enjoying it as well. So what he's talking about in this section right here, I appreciate that Crypto Gains Club, is he's basically saying like initially the highest of stakes team was going to uh, film the launch of Pulse Chain. And if they decided to do that, then there would be essentially a three to four month delay for the people who watch the highest of stakes documentary instead of getting in on pulse chain day one or being early on pulse chain and then hoping that there's a dip in pulse chain or something happening and so richard hart is basically trying to say like i don't like that strategy i'd rather you launch the highest of stakes documentary and then the people who are all excited who figure out about the ecosystem of Hex, of Richard Hart, of Pulse Chain can essentially be ready with dry powder and be ready for the launch of Pulse Chain. So when it does launch, these people are diving in. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Big GZ, thank you. So, so like <laughs> this part, this one section makes me think that Richard Hart had already planned on not launching Pulse Chain until the highest of stakes documentary because he wants as many people as there can be to know about the ecosystem that he is creating. And so clearly the highest of stakes documentary hasn't released yet, nor has the launch of pulse chain. So it leads me to believe that he's still in the, under the impression that he wants people to be early. So this one section of the video makes me think, okay, he is timing the launch of Pulse Chain until we have a uh, 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 until we have Pulse Chain. Now, here's another video that he has again with the director. If we want to talk about just, getting on I the just, biggest stages, hold on. Yeah. Don't you like to win? Do we? You're win, do creating we win a with false a binary choice here. There are uh, multiple other gray areas of winning here. But like, no, but I you just, do want to be number one. I I want Pulse to launch. But it can't launch until it's safe. But you and want your film to also yeah. be number one. Yeah. I but would like your film to be yeah, number one. Yes. So yeah. if if yeah. we need something significant like that that will help it be number one, then we gotta make it happen. But like, like usually we gotta wait and we will hold. delay and we will whatever. Usually, All I'm saying Usually the end of the film yeah. is the resolution of the conflict. And that is and then you have a little bit of drift. See, this is the, the lovely part okay. where he starts teaching me storytelling yes. and lighting. I love it. So, so like leading into the sequel is okay. It's okay, but it is not like when when Titanic ended, they didn't lead into Titanic two sequel. It was still a good film, and so like if Hex like at the end of Titanic, the the dude dies. They, I could see a better ending. Like, I, 
Like Jack could have found like a. Piece I mean, of hold wood. on, we are going to a track. So if you you go into the wall, then yes, we have a different. So okay, so hold on, so so let's talk about that part right there, okay? That part now shows that Richard Hart is almost setting up a sequel, guys, a sequel for the highest mistakes documentary part two. Can you imagine that? He no like the highest mistakes documentary team for one is doing phenomenal work. I love their trailer. I love the sizzle reel. I cannot wait to see it. I cannot wait to share it with everyone. In fact, I'm probably just gonna stream that multiple times because I'll probably miss some information that I may not be catching in the beginning because I'll just be so excited about watching the freaking film. But let's talk about that right there. He just said that a part of the storytelling is to have a conclu uh, to have some sort of portion at the end so there can be a sequel a sequel folks <laughs> and so if we if 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 he is timing the launch of pulse chain for not only the bear market but for the highest of stakes documentary then we may just be sitting on the side until we have the launch of the highest of stakes documentary now, this is me trying to dive in and figure all this out because I do think he is timing it to a portion, right? I think that he he says there has to be some sort of, of resolution that can lead up to a sequel. And, and a part of why Titanic, you know, couldn't make a Titanic 2 is because they, they just concluded it's the end. They're, that's it. And I think they did come out with the Titanic 2, if I'm not mistaken, but it did just garbage in comparison. Did they come out with the Titanic 2? Titanic... Two, they did in 2010, but it just did terrible. So I never saw it. I don't know who did see it. I don't really care, cause uh, cause again, they already came out with the resolution. There was no premise to why I'd want to watch a sequel of the high uh, the uh, the Titanic. But anyways, what he's talking about here is that there needs to be a sequel. There needs to be a reason for people to want to to watch the second part. And folks. Like, it is crazy. Hold on, the, the wife texts again. I assume you're going to finish streaming soon. Aw, cute little puppy, German Shepherd. Just got home. Uh, so, yeah, so, so this alone shows that, again, he's planning for, uh, that he's planning for a sequel, right? And so, like, we now know that that he's already said this, right? He wants there to be a sequel. He wants there to be a portion of time where where we have Hex doing Hex things and then and then Pulse Chain launches and everyone can get in early on that. And then they can film the success of Pulse Chain and continue on through another sequel with him as the main character in this st story, right? He wants the story to continue. He doesn't want it to just, he doesn't want it to reach the final point, right? He doesn't want it to end. And he, and because of that, the story is there. Hi, baby. Uh-uh, uh, Journey. No, you can, okay. Stay here. You're done streaming soon, right? Mm-hmm. Love you. Mwah! All right. <laughs> All the... <laughs> Crypto Games Club says, guess we we get the V3 hype pump movie premiere, pulse release date, hype pump, pulse drop, dip from weekends, start the bull run. <laughs> Dang, hey, if that comes in that order, yeah. Essentially that's that's kind of what we're seeing right now, right? Cause because guys, the, the X price is, is going up with just with just announcement of developers being active. Like how funny is that, right? And so I feel like in that may just I feel like that's really the main cause of like the the hex price going up lately is pulse chain developers are active and people are like fuck yeah pulse chain developers woo and so journey stay come so it's it's funny when you start seeing that stuff right and let me go and play this little clip here right and turn up the volume we need the metrics here guys we need the metrics if you want to get the word out you'll make the world a better place. People got to see the message. Does somebody's out in the states handing out business cards in everybody's cars? Awesome, love it. He's handed out thousands of them. Great, keep up the good work, man. Outbound messaging is king.
Will Pulse launch this year? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it didn't. Him. I've never made an accurate estimate on software timing ever. So. Yeah. And I'll leave that one there, right? Because, again, that, that's all I really wanted to show in that clip, right? He's never made an accurate timing in software. That's for Hex. That's for Pulse Chain. That's for everything happening. So to everyone who blames him, he has said time and time again that he's never made an accurate uh, 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 timing for Pulse Chain. This was another video that he talks about the minimum viable product needed for Pulse Chain to launch. And y'all tell me in the comments down below or in the chat if you think that we already have minimum viable. I think that this extra, so if you didn't have this and you just had the minimum viable product, that would be fine, right? Like, so minimum viable, you could do it without the buy and burn, but I love the buy and burn. I think it's great. Positive price pressure forever. Love it. So I consider the buy and burn minimum viable. And I don't, I don't think it's that hard to code. This add-on part, the extra token, someone has to choose which coins receive this extra token. And that gives you two options. You either have to use an admin key or you can use a DAO. And of the two... One second, that wasn't quite the video that I actually planned on doing because this was, I believe, the video I wanted to share on Minimum Viable. I just forgot to close that tab. Whoops. So that probably takes, I would like a month for that, right? Because our Minimum Viable launch for Mainnet is Uniswap front end. Okay. Working Consensus Network. Okay. Which is, you know, the Pulse, Pulse right. Chain. All right. And uh, Hex front end. Right. And everyone else can catch up and get their front ends built. So if we have an AMM and we have, oh, and a bridge. So, so really, Minimum Viable is working Hex front end, bridge to Ethereum so people can do fiat in and out, you know, because there's not going to be listings right away. And then uh, that's it. You're like Uniswap front end, Hex front end, because the Uniswap code's already coming over. Hex, yeah, I said that already. And then Pulse Network works. Yeah, that's it. So. Okay, so y'all let me know how this is, right? And I'm going to have to hop off stream soon. This is going to be one of my shorter streams today. Got to go take the pup to the vet today to make sure they're up to date on all of their shots. But y'all let me know in the comments down below, do we already have minimum viable? I feel like besides AMM, that's the only thing that he has really not said that is just working exactly like it needs. We have the Uniswap front end already, which comes from, you know, Pulse X. We already have that. We have and guys, keep in mind, I think we're also waiting on the timing of Pulse Chain for Uniswap V3's license to be released, which is coming around May. Because then they can just copy the code and have single-sided staking and single-sided liquidity on Pulse X right away, just immediately, if we have the license for V3, Uniswap. So we have the highest of stakes documentary that we're waiting on to launch for Pulse Chain and, and continue the story. We have Uniswap V3 license that we're waiting on to copy and continue to work on. And then we also and then we also have again, like I think we already have everything else that he was talking about from Minimum Viable. We had the bridge, and the bridge was built by another team, PulseRamp.com. It no longer works on Testnet because Ethereum has gotten rid of Rink B testnet, but I'm sure that there are other developers like OX Coast and other people who are com committing to building this front end or bridge uh, to allow it to happen. I, I think I saw something saying Beetroots was coming out with a protocol as well. Um, again, who knows if, if that's going to be the case and if it's good and all that, but there's already ha like we already have basically everything I think we need. Hey. K4K coming through. Look at that. Appreciate that, my friend. Appreciate the stream and breakdown. Thank you so much for the comment. Definitely means a lot coming from this guy. I absolutely love K4K crypto. 
Um, looking forward to us chatting with each other. He is a phenomenal uh <laughs> good drop <laughs> might as well uh it, it was there right and i'm just sharing the information that i see uh i absolutely love k4k's video he's very knowledgeable and insightful if y'all don't have if y'all aren't already following his channel but you're watching mine you're doing it backwards somehow i appreciate everyone tuning in but uh definitely go give k4k a follow right uh definitely you're gonna get a lot of love in the chat over here as well k4k good to see you and uh, definitely much, much love coming from our ATX crypto fam over here. It's been a blast overall just having this develop, uh, having the community keep growing and just continuing everything as we continue, right? Um, so, so today I will be hopping off the stream. It's been an absolute blast with everyone being in here. I appreciate everyone coming in, tuning in, participating in the chat, enjoying this, con uh, this stream with me. Definitely leave a like, a comment, and a sub down below. It would definitely mean a lot to hit 500 subscribers before the end of the month. But I definitely do feel that Richard Hart is timing the launch of Pulse Chain, whether it be the end of the bear market, whether it be Uniswap, whether it be the highest of stakes documentary. I think he's timing, right? And so based on all that information that I see, I gotta say, you know, it's probably right there. Yeah, exactly. Appreciate it, doctor. And I know it's by DR, but I'm going to say doctor on that one because that's the way I see it. What up? Sitting back and listening. Bright Light Crypto. Well, I am hopping off, unfortunately, at this point in time. You can go back, rewatch, and definitely uh, go back and see kind of why I think he's waiting for the launch of Pulse Chain. I think there's a lot of considerations happening, folks. But thank you again to everyone who came in, who participated in the chat. I'll give a shout out to everyone as well. Bright Light Crypto, DR, Justin Perez, Hex Turtle, K4K Crypto, Gabriel, Crypto Gains Club, 369, Big GZ. Uh, we had uh, RN come through and we also had Cash Up Cash. Guys, thank you so much for participating in the stream with me. I will catch y'all in my next video. And I didn't have any music going that whole time. Anyways, I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.